pop quiz. What do you think of when you think of Japan? Maybe this, this, and this? Perhaps even this or this? I'm willing to bet, however, that it's probably not a landscape like this. And yet, what you're looking at is very much in Japan. This is Mount Aso on Japan's southernmost main island of Kyushu. It's a large, volcanically active area that has some great climbs, awesome views, and occasionally quite alien vistas. In this video, I'm going to take you on a day hike up to Mount Naka and Mount Taka, or Nakadake and Takadake respectively, to show you why Mount Aso is absolutely a place to put on your wish list. Let's get to it. Mount Aso is the largest active volcano in Japan. And while it might sound like a single mountain, it's actually a group of five peaks. Located smack bang in the middle of Kyushu, the nearest major city is Kumamoto. You can fly into Kumamoto from Tokyo, but I actually arrived at Aso from the opposite side of the island, having visited the famous hot spring destination of Beppu first. Regardless of whether you're coming from Kumamoto or Beppu, the quickest way to get to Aso by public transport is a special train called Aso Boy that has some extremely cute and rather quirky theming around a dog mascot called Kuro. I had no idea that it was a thing when working out my route, so I was pleasantly surprised to find myself on a train that has a literal ball pit. Mind you, this kind of stuff tends to happen a lot in Japan. You're looking at the fastest way to get from A to B on the map, and the next thing you know, you're sitting on an Anpan Man train full of excited kids. In any case, Aso Boy was a fun way to get to Aso Station, even if, as an English speaker, I could easily imagine a world where it had another mascot. I mean, the theme song is practically written already. Aso Boy, Aso Boy, he will try to Mount Aso's hiking trails are about half an hour by bus from Aso Station, but I was arriving in the late afternoon, so my plan was to chill out that evening and then take the first bus out to Mount Aso the following morning. My accommodation was an extremely short walk from Aso Station, past the One Piece statue because of course there was a One Piece statue, and very much lived up to its name as a great base for exploring the area. Getting out to Mount Aso is simplicity itself, as the buses depart from right outside the train station. That said, you're quite limited in terms of options as there are only six buses per day, at least as of my 2023 trip. The first one leaves at 9.55am and given the last bus heading back to parts at 4.30pm, it's not really possible to have a super long day out there. It costs 730 yen each way and while it's easy enough to buy a ticket from the station, I'd recommend using an IC card as that way you just have to tap when you get on and off. It's about 25 minutes to get to the first stop within Mount Aso, and the bus passes by some lovely countryside on the way. Winding through a lush forest, then emerging into open space with a plain on one side and green slopes topped by a set of mountains on the other. Mount Aso is a huge caldera, and as I mentioned before, it has a number of peaks, so there are plenty of options for how to spend time out there. If you get off at the first stop, for instance, that's the Kusasenri Volcano Museum stop, you can climb Kishimadake and Eboshidake, but I wanted to hike up to the summit of Nakadake, so stayed on the bus for another 10 minutes or so and got off at Aso Sanjo Terminal. From this point, it's a short walk, or you can get a shuttle bus, to the most actively volcanic part of the region. This seething crater is part of Mount Naka and makes quite an impression, with tons of gas venting up out of the depths and an intensely acrid, sulfurous smell in the air. There are actually seven craters within a kilometer heading south from here, but this is the only active one and is continuously monitored for hazardous gases like sulfur dioxide. Most of the time, thankfully, the gas is comprised largely of water vapor and on calmer days, you can apparently see the acidic blue pond inside the crater too. If you're allowed to get this close, don't take it for granted. Mount Aso actually erupted as recently as October 2021, belching out huge plumes of smoke and ash and resulting in a no-entry zone around the crater, which was only lifted in March of 2023. Even outside a large event like that, the area around the crater can be closed depending on volcanic activity, gas levels or bad weather. Access can even change over the course of a day. If you want to know the current status, you can check in with the visitor center just across the road from Aso Station, where they have English language speaking staff. That's also a good spot to get maps of the available hikes and to make sure you have the latest bus timetable too. I got a solid trail map from the visitor center, but wound up opting to do a shorter hike from all trails to ensure I had plenty of time to stop and film and enjoy the scenery, 
while still getting back with time to spare for a bus later on. If you're going by car on the other hand, I definitely suggest doing a longer version of the hike. Once you've taken in the crater, you can head to the start of the Nakadake Trail, which kicks off with a surreal stroll across a flat expanse covered in volcanic ash that might as well be on the moon. This area is a crater floor called Sunasenri Gahama, and in addition to all the volcanic ash, there are also countless hardened pyroclastic rocks scattered about here. These are called volcanic bombs and are created when a mass of lava cools as it's flung out of an erupting volcano. They can be anywhere from a few centimeters in diameter up to more than a meter. I saw a number of people cut across Sunasenri Gahama instead of going along the path, but I followed the wooden boardwalk. It takes you up some stairs to a winding trail with otherworldly views out across the plain. Like so much of the hike to come, this volcanic vista is rugged, desolate and windswept, but also strangely appealing. The landscape changes as you walk, and every so often I caught a glimpse of a verdant world outside this arid expanse. The next destination on the hike is the slope directly ahead. This is the main climb of the route, and as you approach it, you come down off the ridge and make your way along a narrow path until the steep, rocky slope opens up before you. There's no one path up this section of the hike, so pick out any route that makes sense, keeping an eye out for yellow spray-painted arrows as these will help guide you a little. It's a bit of a scramble, and the slope goes on and on and on, but thankfully as it does, the views grow more and more commanding. Eventually, you'll reach a post marking a milestone on the climb, but there's still a bit more altitude to be gained ahead. In any case, take a breather and enjoy the spectacle, then continue on. Eventually, you'll reach the trail at the summit that heads left towards Nakadake, but my advice is to take a short detour to the right and climb up to this outlook. From here, you can see a huge slice of land, from the smoke belching out of the crater near the start of the hike, across to Eboshidake and Kishimadake with the Volcano Museum car park a dot between them, and on to the massive green valley surrounding Mount Aso's core. After retracing your steps, you can then follow the path along the ridgeline in the direction of Nakadake's summit. It's quite incredible seeing the crater billowing out steam from up above, and the path in general gives you a fantastic view over the area, with the ground simply dropping away on the left-hand side, and a green peak in the distance juxtaposed with an ashen mountain on the right. Continuing on towards Nakadake, the scenery is never anything less than eye-popping and after another slog up a rocky slope, you'll reach the summit. You're now at 1,506 metres above sea level and standing atop Mount Aso's second highest peak behind Takadake. From here, you can turn to the left and follow a path that takes you even closer to the active crater, but as mentioned, I was following the All Trails route, so turn to the right and climb to the summit of Takadake, which stands at 1,592 metres above sea level. This part of the hike is a large loop along the rim of and then through Takadake's enormous crater. And this next section is absolutely spectacular as the path follows the exposed ridgeline with a sheer drop on one side that gives way to a dizzyingly panoramic vista. I didn't really know what to expect from this hike coming into it, but after so many barren peaks and rocky trails, the next section of sudden greenery still took me by surprise and the dense shrubs and narrow winding paths make for a nice change of pace. The track soon climbs back up to the crater's rim, however, with a whole new outlook to enjoy. From here, the path heads down into the crater itself, eventually bringing you to a shack where you can stop for a breather or take shelter if the weather turns. Beyond this, you're walking through the centre of the crater with no ability to see any of the wider landscape. This segment of the walk has no clear path, so once again, just keep an eye out for spray painted rocks to help guide you. Before long, you'll be up and out of the crater and completing the loop of Takadake. From here, it's just a matter of retracing your steps and steadily making your way back to where you started. While this particular hike through Mount Aso isn't long, it just has so much to offer in terms of changing terrain, compellingly alien landscapes and incredible views. I was here towards the end of spring, incidentally, and as you can see, the weather was pretty perfect. 
about the only issues I had were the odd gust of strong wind up high and the absolute gale that was blowing ash everywhere when I made my way back around Sunasenri Gahama. No matter, I completed the return journey to the start of the trail and then sped my way back to Aso Sandro Terminal. Once there, I grabbed a delicious local red IPA while waiting for the bus, then headed back to Aso Station. As is tradition, after a day's hiking, my next stop was a local onsen, Aso Bocho Onsen, aka You May Know You, which is just around the corner from Aso Station. It's a pretty good facility for a neighborhood bathhouse too. In addition to the main bathing areas for men and women, it also has family rental baths in a separate building and an outdoor foot bath tucked around the corner. The onsen itself is fed by a natural hot spring that bubbles up 260 litres of 53 degrees Celsius water per minute. Thankfully, the baths are a little cooler than that. The main building's wooden beams and high ceiling make it feel a little like an old school country house, albeit one with a wall of vending machines. As you enter, the reception is on the right and there's a relaxation room on the left. Rather idiosyncratically, but not surprisingly, as Japan is just like this sometimes, there are also posters from seemingly random movies on the walls. I mean, I love Die Hard as much as the next guy, but that's a strange fit for such a zen place. That said, you'll probably be saying yippee ki yay when you find out the price, as you may know you costs only 400 yen for entry or 300 yen if you're staying at Aso Base and get your ticket through them. That price doesn't include towels, by the way, but you can rent those separately if you haven't brought your own. It also costs 20 yen to use a locker in the changing room if you need one. Since I can't film inside the changing room or bathing area, from this point on we're going to be relying on somewhat tangential generative art combined with upscaled versions of the postage stamp sized images from the official website. With that disclaimer out of the way, there's a changing room that then leads through to both an indoor and outdoor bathing area. Inside are stalls for washing and a long main bath underneath the window. This room also has a good sized cold bath and sauna, which is set to a shade above 90 degrees Celsius. Perfect. Outside is a gorgeous rock bath framed by a pagoda and bamboo grove. The bath itself is set to a pretty mild temperature, but when you do eventually want a break, there's a large bench seat off to one side that you can use to chill out. The first time I went, it was actually raining, so I just sat on the bench and cooled off in the drizzle. It was sublime. In fact, there really are few things better at the end of a day out in nature than relaxing at a bathhouse, so definitely give it a go the next time you're in Japan. After my super relaxing soak, there was only one thing left to make the day complete, a delicious meal. So I popped across to Ramen Gyan, a restaurant mere meters away for a tsukemen to finish a fantastic day in Aso. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video has made you excited about visiting Kyushu and seeing a whole other side of Japan. Please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more Japan-centric travel videos. Be sure to also check out the guides I've already published which cover off fantastic day hike options from Kyoto, Tokyo and Osaka, as well as general travel tips and a complete overview of how Japanese bathhouses work and what to expect. I'll leave you with one last panoramic vista from Mount Aso. Come by.